Woo! What is going on, everybody? Huh? Dude, this might very well be the last podcast that I do for a while. I'll explain in a minute. Let me introduce myself and the podcast itself. This is the Off Base Podcast. Whoa! The podcast that is it's carefully crafted to remind you to suck on a fat one if, if you think that you're the only one because you're not. And I'm your host. I'm the Rocky Mountain no-name jackass. And it's 68 degrees here in the city of Aurora at 7.52 in the a.m. on Friday, May 27th, 2022. 7-11 coffee coming at you. If it's not fresh, it's free, according to the guy's t-shirts inside. I don't know if anyone's ever called him out on it, but chaw time! Yeah, the reason why this might be the last one for a while is because, um, you know, I'm not going to be off base that often over the next three months. Hmm? What do I mean by that? What I mean by that? is the school year, as of 11 o'clock this afternoon, is over! Little Michael Corleone for you right there. Over! Yes, the two olders. They're done. Stepson was finished on Wednesday. Let's go, by the way. Glasses back on. Stepson was done on Wednesday. Step Juada finished yesterday. And I just dropped my son off. And he's done at 11 o'clock. Today. That's it. No more going off base for school until August, kids. So I may have to figure something else out as far as doing a podcast. If I still want to, you know, run my fucking yap for the two people out there who enjoy listening to me. Or... They may not enjoy listening to me. They just might listen to me to pass the time, which I understand. I understand. But yeah, school year is coming to a close. So last night for uh, Step Jordas end of school, I had asked because their their mother's out of town on TDY temporary duty. She's returning this afternoon. I will be picking her up from the airport. She, she came me. I was just texting her a couple minutes ago. I was like, hey, when do you get back? And she gave me the military time of 1436. And I, and I texted back, very precise. Nice. 1436. Down to the minute. So, uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar with military time, that's 236 in the afternoon. But I told her, hey, just text me when you're at baggage claim. Because sometimes when she's given me the time before and I go to pick her up, I got to sit there and wait an hour. And I don't, 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 don't want to be doing that. I got to, I got stuff to do today. <clears throat> we got uh, dinner and drinks for my wife and I to have. But then I also, I got to get a, a workout in. Uh, I'll get back to that in a second. So step Jordan, because her mom's out of town. You know, oftentimes I'll cook stuff that my wife doesn't like. And one of the things that we did on Tuesday, I think it was, we did we did fried chicken. We did chicken wings. Fried them ourselves. Kids love them. Oh, yeah, I talked about that on Wednesday. On the Wednesday morning edition of the Off Base podcast. And last night, um, stepdaughter, she loves steak. And she also loves Parmesan cheese. So I did a cachao y pepe. <laughs> what the fuck? Excuse me. Cachao y pepe, which is cheese and pepper. We did that over penne pasta, and I cooked up one uh, bone-in ribeye, and I cooked up a T-bone porterhouse, which, by the way, I got both of those for under $10 a pound at the commissary. So I cut a little bit off the porterhouse and gave the rest to stepson because he's, he's not a, the biggest fan of cachao y pepe. And then took the ribeye 
and cut that up into nice small chunks, gave half to stepdaughter and half to myself. I had some nice red wine to go with that. There's this Malbec that I found <coughs> at the commissary. It's only like 12 bucks a bottle, I think 12, 13 bucks a bottle. It's very good. And we watched A Few Good Men with Tom Cruise and Jack Nicholson. Tom Cruise overacted it just a little bit. And Jack Nicholson was far too old to be playing the role. The casting directors should have picked somebody younger, I think. But what do I know? Um, however, all that being said, all that being said, you know, they did give us uh, some iconic movie moments there. And the kids were great at the very end when uh, Cruz was going after him. And he said, you ordered the code red. You ordered code red. And he, and he said, you're goddamn right I did. Both my stepchildren uh, had been watching intently. Like, they were into the movie. I was like, yes. Because I love showing them movies that, uh, you know, have had an impact on me. And... and <clears throat> Unlike, you know, the time of our parents, our parents, they didn't, they didn't, like, they were really good stories for the, like, the old time movies, but nowadays, you know, uh, or I should say, like, you know, starting 70s, 80s, 90s, we started to incorporate more music, um, <clears throat> the directors, they got real smart with, with how they filmed stuff, and then, of course, you know, you get into the 90s, 2000s, and CGI takes over, and stuff like that. Boy, you know, which leads us into the current generation. I don't know if I'm making a whole hell of a lot of sense right now, but what I, well, I guess what I mean is, is that it was harder for me to watch movies from my parents' generation than it is for our kids to watch movies from our generation. <laughs> you know, one of the things being the, the black and white versus color. Like, if if you're young and you see a black and white movie, you're like, what the hell? <laughs> I don't, I don't know what I'm talking about. Either way, anyway, to go back to it. They were both intently watching the, the movie. Like, they were way into it. And he went after him. He goes, you're the code red. You're goddamn right I did. Both from who had been leaning forward on the couch, watching intently. When he, when he said, you're goddamn right I did. Both of them, their spine straightened. They went, whoa! <laughs> like they were not expecting it at all. It was awesome. It was very, very cool just to see them have those same kinds of reactions that I had when I watched those movies. And they did the same thing, I think I mentioned it on Wednesday, they did the same thing when we watched Kill Bill Volume 1, when at the end David Carradine said, uh, does she know that her daughter's still alive? And my stepdaughter was like, what? Nice cliffhanger to take you into Volume 2. Now, uh, when was it? Oh yeah, I think it was Wednesday night. Yeah, it was Wednesday night. Because yesterday was Thursday. Wednesday night, um, my stepson, my stepson, my son had his first baseball practice. So I was with him there. And the coaches kind of don't know what the hell they're doing. <laughs> and I wish they would provide much more structure for these kids. But I think the coaches that were there kind of got roped, roped into doing it. Uh, because the league needs coaches, which I understand. So I actually went in and, and helped him out halfway through the practice. It's fucking Audi. Better not think he's going to pass me. <clears throat> I mean, if he wanted to, it should have. Fucking Audi. My wife has an Audi. Audi's a fucking great car. So anyway, still, my son had baseball practice. And when I was with him there for the, the two-hour duration... I told the uh, stepchildren, I was like, hey, if you guys want to watch Volume 2, you're welcome to it. I'd love to watch it with you, but if you want to have at it, you can. And they did end up watching Volume 2, and they liked it. They liked the Kill Bills. <clears throat> Pie Bay and the Five Point Palm Exploding Heart Technique. Yeah, that's right. Pie Bay is the one who snatched Daryl Hannah's eye out. That movie's fun. Those two movies are fun. So yeah, I had a I had a, a pretty good week with all the kids, man. We are approaching though the big Murph day. I did a half a Murph yesterday. I walked a half a mile uphill at 3.1 miles per hour at a 10% grade. Then I got off and I did 50 pull-ups, 100 push-ups, 150 squats in rounds of 5, 10, and 15. 
along with five sit-ups and a sun salutation, just to make sure that I'm keeping my flexibility going. I kind of like this that, that this routine that I'm doing, uh, trying to you know keep increased flexibility while also working on strength while also working on cardio. It's it's a hell of a workout. And then I got back on the treadmill and walked another half mile at a 10% grade uphill at 3.1 miles per hour. And the entire workout, the walk, half mile walk takes 10 minutes, so I walked for 20 minutes. And then the 50, 10, 150 that I did, that that took 20. So it was, it's a good 40 minute workout. And my heart rate's going the whole time. Like I'm breathing really, really well. Uh, it's, I'm not breathing super heavy, such to the point where I'm getting fucking exhausted. And I need to, you know, take a two-minute rest before I can start up again. It's just a nice, steady state. I can tell that I'm burning calories, big-time calories, yo. And that's the goal. However, <laughs> if I want to lose weight, I have to, I have to take in less calories than I am <laughs> burning up. Oh, there's an antelope right in the middle of the cows. Oh, it looks beautiful. It looks like a picture. Holy shit. So anyway. Uh, last night with the Cachao y Pepe, I had a uh, an entire bottle of wine myself. <laughs> I was just having fun. The dinner was delicious. The wine went great with the steak and the Parmesan. And then just sitting back and watching Nicholson and Cruz go at it. By the way, Demi Moore's character is so underrated there. And I don't know if it was just me and the mindset that I was in as a young man where when a woman's in the movie, she's got to be the love interest, and then the, 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 the two um, leads have to end up fucking, which of course they didn't in this, and as, uh, as I'm older now, I really appreciate the fact that they didn't hook up in the movie, um, but she, she was, she, like, her, her role, her character, it's absolutely integral to that story because without her, she wouldn't have pushed Tom Cruise's character, Daniel Caffey. She wouldn't have pushed Caffey to the point where, you know, he wanted to stand up and make an argument and fight for somebody, fight for what was right. And at every point in the movie, even when they were down, Markinson just just committed suicide. Loudon Downey wasn't even there uh, to hear the order, to hear the code red. Their, their case was shot, and she still was like, you got to put Jessup on the stand. And he was like, what? Because she knew, and it was never uttered, but you could tell just by watch, watching the, sh- the, the story unfold, she knew what the hell was going on. She knew Code Reds were still being practiced. She wanted it to stop because of people like Santiago who got murdered. And she knew the only way to do it was to get... Uh, Jessup to admit it, but she also knew that she didn't have the skills to do it. She knew that Kathy had the skills to do it. So, <clears throat> I mean, the optimism that comes out of a character like that, it's just real, it just, it drives the story. Now, granted, he's the one that, that went through the arc where he didn't trust himself. He was called to action, didn't think he could do it. Then it, then he, you know, the, the typical hero journey, call to action, refused to, refused the call, and then something happens where you accept the call to action, and then off off you go on your journey, and, and there you go, and you go through your change, which he did obviously. Um, but her character was that that sporting character that is consistent all the way through. It, it, she already understands um, and needs needs to get him to the point where he understands, which he did at the end of the movie, which was awesome. So anyway. Here's my jackass uh, review of the script. Not necessarily the movie, but the script. Which is great. Aaron Sorkin. Aaron Sorkin, baby. And if I'm not mistaken, he did a lot of um, crime dramas back in the 80s and 90s on TV as well. If I'm not mistaken. So, um, yeah. I forgot what I was going to talk about. Oh, yeah. Workout. Murph. Coming up. The Big Bad Murph on Memorial Day. We got a nice weekend planned here. My lady's coming back. We're going to have nice weather. Even though I'm looking at uh, white caps on the Rocky Mountains right now because we got that snow two weeks ago. <laughs> or wait, that was last weekend. It snowed fucking last weekend. 
That's right, fucking assholes. I don't know who I'm calling a fucking asshole, but I fucking snow in May. Jesus Christ. It was 20 degrees. It was it was 85 one day and then the next day 60, 65 degrees lower. Volatility in temperature. Crazy. So yeah, my wife will be home. We'll have uh, dinner and drinks after I do my workout. I'm going to do a full Murph today. Get myself ready for Monday. And then hopefully get some kind of workout in tomorrow. And then Sunday will we'll be a rest. And then we'll do the Murph on uh, Monday morning. Um, we will be going to Cats tomorrow. Taking the kids. And then going to Fogo de Chao afterwards. And then Sunday we're going to the zoo. In Colorado Springs. Now the older kids. I think they could care less about the zoo one way or the other. My son will love it. And then the, our friends that we're meeting there. They have two kids. Ten and eight. Or it's either 10 and 8 or 10 and 7 and of course they'll love the zoo too and then we're going to stay overnight Sunday night at their place do the Murph, eat and then go home on Monday it's going to be awesome yeah yeah bitches so um yeah <clears throat> now the question for me is after the Murph is done what am I going to do for for working out I don't know I think I'll still do two Murphs per month because I just fucking I love that fucking workout it's just basic you know basic cardio basic strength and like I said one of the things that I started to incorporate it into it is sun salutations and sit ups so basic strength basic cardio and then basic stretching One of the things I was toying with, because I don't have to take the kids to school, is getting a uh, a weighted vest, either a 10-pound or a 20-pound, probably start with a 10-pound, and then sometime in the, in the midday, just walk over to the gym, uh, do a resistance workout, maybe I'll do a bro split, for those of you who don't know the bro split, I think, I, I could be wrong on this, I could be a jackass on this. But I think it's working out five days a week, uh, a different part, body part each of the five days. So like our arms one day, shoulders one day, chest one day, back one day, and legs one day. I think that's the split. Bro split. So then, you know, then walking over to the gym, it's, it's about a 15-minute walk. So it's roughly three-quarters of a mile. So I get that cardio resistance in. Go in there, get the workout, a little resistance, maybe a half hour workout, and then walk back 15 minutes. That's, that's a good hour right there. Good hour every day. I might do that. I also would love to learn how to swim. Never learned how to swim. My older sister and my two older brothers, they went to swim lessons. They learned how to swim, but I never learned how to swim. <clears throat> I learned at some point to doggy paddle, but I never learned any of the, the four major strokes. You know, freestyle, backstroke. I also have issues, though, with my ears. Like, if I get water in my ears, it'll stay in my ears for a long time. Happened when when we lived in Texas and we had our pool in the back. I used to uh, throw coins in the pool and have the kids dive for them. And then I would do it as well. And there was this one time where I went in, came back up, couldn't hear, tried to shake it out, smacking my head. And I think I did some kind of damage by, by doing that. But... Um, yeah, for about four days, I think, three, four days, I couldn't hear out of, out of one ear. It was still clogged up. And then at one point, it just kind of pulled it down, pulled it open, and the water came out and popped. And I was like, oh, my God, now I can hear. It was weird. Anywho. We're getting back on base. My sleep has been really good this week, too, by the way. Really good. I did wake up today at about 3.45, but then went back to sleep, slept right into the alarm. It was awesome. Woke up at about uh, 10 to 6. Good morning. morning, brother. All right, you're all set. Have Thanks, nice man. Day. Yes, sir. Young kids. Always pulling for them. You know what? I'm, I'm rolling the windows down, everybody. Because it's a nice morning. It's 70 degrees at 8, 12. 
really, really beautiful. <clears throat> so work-wise, I am at the tail end of a, a really, really long project that I've been working on, which is getting all of our Excel library models up to date, consolidated. I will finish that today. And I started it back in November, so that's a that's a seven month seven month project. It will be complete. It's great. Then I'm going to go on to uh, recording a webinar series and teaching people how to use our product, keeping it nice and simple. Oh wow, that's a nice view. Denver in the foreground with the Rockies in the back there, kid. That was very nice. And I think we're going to close it out on that one, people. That's the way to do it. We're back on base. This is the off-base podcast, so it's supposed to happen when I'm off-base. And like I said, to start this thing out, this might be the last one that I do for a while because I don't know if I'm going to find myself off-base. Might have to break the rules, though, over the summer. We'll see what happens. So if I don't uh, hear from you, If you don't see me, I want you to have a fabulous Memorial Day and all the cool shit that comes along with having a great summer, which includes Father's Day, uh, and then of course July 4th, and I'm, I'm way into the New England accent right now. But it's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure speaking with everybody. Like I said, uh, I'll probably find a way to be able to talk to everybody over the summer, maybe one, two times a week, break the rules. But man, it's been awesome. For my two podcast listeners, thanks for sticking with me. <laughs> and I will smell you sometime in the future. Bye.